okay welcome back uh, so we saw you know agripa's response each one's response was so different and agripa is saying you are almost convincing me but paul says listen i want you to um, you know become all together like me except for these chains so finally you know even agripa is unwilling uh, to respond to the gospel right away so he just goes to festus and he says you know what this man in whatever he has shared there's nothing wrong basically uh, he we he would have been free uh, unless you know he would have been free just that he has requested to go and meet caesar if he had not appealed to caesar then uh, as a king right even he was an authority and he could have even convinced festus uh, right now this man is under you festus you set him free because there is nothing wrong in what paul had shared so that was agrippa's response he said look if you were not if he had not asked to go to uh, uh, caesar he would have been set free but now that he has appealed he has to go to caesar so he needs to be sent to caesar right where is caesar caesar the highest authority augustus caesar uh, uh, he was in rome italy okay and paul as a roman citizen he needed to go there we know that the romans had gained you know power uh, the roman empire right they had conquered and uh, they had gained power over different regions so there was roman authority um, uh, you know that Uh, that was all over the place and also paul himself he was a roman citizen so he is going back to caesar to make an appeal so he is entrusted to uh, a person called as julius a uh, centurion now they had to give him as a prisoner under the centurion so that he is protected right and the prisoner would be made to travel all the way to rome uh, for the proceedings the for the proceedings of this case so that's what happened so they gave uh, paul to julius and uh, said okay you take him to rome now the journey starts and some people call this the fourth journey uh, but we know that it was not like an intended missionary journey from caesarea to rome uh, but there was a lot of ministry that happened in this journey so sometimes you know people call it the fourth journey so don't get confused if people say oh three missionary journeys what about the four missionary journeys of paul because although this was not a planned one uh, it is sometimes included as the fourth journey so we saw you know for some time paul was at the uh, cesarea and finally it is time for him to go to rome okay now i wanted actually uh, there are a uh, uh, lot of um, places uh, that you know we'll read the names because it's a journey so i i feel like it will be good for us to uh, just see the map once so let me do that okay uh so just before just before i show us about the journey to row um, quickly a little bit about the timelines okay because we haven't talked about it at all so we said that the first uh years of the church was about 8 uh, you know 8 years okay uh, when the church grew and the church was in revival and all and then when paul came on scene uh, it was the uh, uh, next about 9 um, years okay so already how much time has passed by 8 years 8 plus 10 15 years have passed by all right so uh, at 30 ad is when the uh, church was birthed so 30 ad now about 45 45 uh, in fact exact would be 47 47 ad so 17 years uh, and then we see the missionary journeys of paul right taking place in the next 20 years so we are talking about three decades here three or um, you know uh, nearly 30 yeah a 37 37 years okay over three decades so, so 20 years is what the time span is uh, when you are reading from acts chapter 13 to acts chapter 28 so don't forget that 
right? He spent uh, a lot of time in different places. First missionary journey, he spent two years. Second missionary journey, he spent about three years. Then third missionary journey, he spent four years. You know, then uh, we know in Caesarea, we saw, right? Felix kept him for two years. He didn't make any decisions. So two years spent there. Then you have uh, the Roman imprisonment. We are going to uh, read about that another three years. OK, then we also have uh, you know, the final years of Paul, which is about four years. And then finally, you know, uh, in AD 68, we are told that Paul was actually martyred, AD 68. Okay, so he would have been in his 60s when he actually died. Uh, he came to know the Lord at around what age? He said, you know, 30 years or 33 years. That was also Paul's age. And when he died, he was about you know, over 60. Uh, like if you calculate, I think it comes to 66 years. So that was the age of Paul. So you have... Uh, First missionary journey, second missionary journey, third missionary journey, uh, then Caesarean uh, imprisonment, then your uh, uh, imprisonment in Rome, and then the final years of Paul. And one more thing for us to remember is that in all this, right, as the time went by, wherever Paul was, under each missionary journey, there was, uh, you know, the writing of epistles. So he did oversee the churches that he planted he gave them uh, that ap apostolic uh, you know governance uh, meaning he instructed them on the things of god and he instructed them on you know uh, the right way to worship the right way to live uh, you know the right way to conduct themselves in the house of god he uh, he was instrumental in appointing elders leaders we saw how he mentored people like timothy titus so Overall, you know, when you look at the life of Paul, what a what an amazing kingdom worker, you know, uh, Paul's life and that example of his life really is uh, because he, you know, how he told King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. He did all this as an apostle, as a leader, that his pastoral heart. We saw that in Ephesians, uh, sorry, Acts 20, when he met the elders of Ephesus, how he gave them instructions, you know, like you hold on to the word, the word will build you up. There will be uh, people who may rise against you, uh, but, you know, be strong. So that pastoral heart, we, we're truly seeing, you know, that he served so passionately and so obediently. Uh, so that is that gives us an understanding of the way Paul served. And, uh, you know, for about 30, 33 years of his life, once he accepted Christ, uh, what, what an amazing way, what an amazing way. Yes, he never uh, saw Jesus or, or you could say was with Jesus when he uh, when Jesus was alive, but still, uh, when Jesus encountered him on the road to Damascus, there was a very real transformation. What a testimony! A persecutor turned into a preacher and a, and a, an apostle who uh, served God. You know, and we we see right. We see how uh, there was nothing that people could even bring against him. And also, when you read about you know, his missionary journeys, uh, you see that these instructions, I told you, he gave governance to the churches. He wrote epistles. Epistles are letters uh, which were written to different churches. So under the first uh, missionary journey, he wrote first and second Thessalonians because remember, that's, uh, uh, sorry, second missionary journey because uh, in the first missionary journey, he had been there. He couldn't stay there for long. Right. Remember, Jason, uh, he, they brought him, they beat him up, they brought him, they took a, uh, an amount, uh, bail amount from him. And then they uh, told him, hey, don't do all this, you know, uh, preaching the gospel and all that. So he didn't spend much time in, in Thessalonica. So he wrote to the Thessalonians, first and second Thessalonians during his second missionary journey. And then similarly, you know, we read that in his third missionary journey, when Paul was in the third missionary journey, he wrote Galatians and he wrote 1 Corinthians. Okay. Uh, he also wrote 2 Corinthians and from Greece, he wrote a letter to the Romans as well. So till now, he has not gone to Rome. But you see, he already wrote to the Romans when uh, he was in Greece. 
you know, uh, maybe Athens. Uh, so these are the epistles that he wrote in the second missionary journey. Galatians, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and a letter to the Romans. Now, uh, yeah, he wrote it in the third missionary journey. Okay, I hope I said third missionary journey. First, second, third, it's all getting mixed up. Okay, so first missionary journey, there are no epistles. Second, first and second Thessalonians. Third, the four epistles that I shared. Later on, you know, during his Roman imprisonment, he writes to more churches. So he writes to uh, the Colossians. Then, um, you know, the, there is uh, a Philemon, Ephesians, and Philippians. Okay, these are known as the prison epistles of Paul. So there are four epistles that Paul wrote. And then uh, in his final years, you know, how he exhorts Timothy, right? I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. Uh, you be like a good soldier and all. So first and second Timothy, he writes, okay, towards the end of his life. His life is going to end now. They are going to kill him. So that is the time. He had an idea, just like Jesus. He also had an idea. Ah, my time is up. So he gave those specific instructions to Timothy. He wrote first and second Timothy. He told him, how should you select leaders? You know, how should you uh, take care of the church? And also Titus. Okay, so these are the epistles which he wrote towards the very end of his life. So the last book which he actually wrote was second Timothy. Okay, so Second Timothy is what he wrote. So if you count up uh, the number of uh, epistles that he wrote, uh, you would have yeah. Okay, I'm correct. So thirteen, thirteen epistles uh, is what uh, Paul wrote, but there is also a. Um, a speculation that the book of Hebrews, you know, when you read the book of Hebrews, uh, it's it's hard to tell who wrote it. There are many theories, you know, uh, Aquila, Priscilla, they wrote it, Apollos wrote it, uh, somebody else wrote it, Paul wrote it, you know, Silas wrote it. So there are all these contentions about the book of Hebrews. But if Paul is the one who has written it, which a lot of people say it is Paul, it would be 14. But otherwise, 13 epistles is what? Paul wrote uh, and you know uh, we see therefore uh, that this is how the the time span also is when you consider the book of Acts okay so about 37 years is what we read here now till the Roman imprisonment we will see that uh, we uh, read about the life of Paul but after the Roman imprisonment right abruptly Acts chapter 28 we know the chapters and all are what came in later but Luke could not complete further the life of Paul now we don't know what happened why why didn't Luke write more about the final years of Paul what happened after the Roman imprisonment you know we have to study about all that through the epistles so whatever he writes here and there, and again, you know, some historical records, that gives us an idea about Paul's life after the Roman imprisonment. But Acts 28 ends abruptly, you could say, or suddenly, you could say, uh, only describing the Roman imprisonment. Okay, only till there we, we see. So about 37 years, you could say, is uh, what you have we have looked at in the book of Acts so far, okay, 37 years. But to that, we can always add, you know, more years, the final years of Paul, um, and then his his martyrdom. So that would be, again, another maybe five years, five years or so. So 37 plus five, you know, if at all, those years were also mentioned. Mm, uh, how much is that? Oh, 42 years. Okay, so through a con uh, an entire 42 years to start for us for uh, like the book of acts to unfold and the life of paul to kind of um, uh, be seen and till the end of paul's life right it's uh, about uh, i said 42 right yeah uh, 42 years so that's a little bit about your time span in uh, the book of acts i do have a summary uh, which i told you i will post uh, i will I'll post it. This is basically a compilation from the uh, publication. We have a publication by the name of Revivals, Visitations, and Moves of God. And that records the book of Acts 
very beautifully like a revival so i really encourage you to go ahead and read it uh, but i'm going to post this for google classroom students as well as the e learning students so you will have a good picture now let's quickly look at the map and then we can uh, cover up the remaining remaining things here in the two chapters Okay. Yeah. So go with me here. Can you all see it? Yes, Master. Okay. Yes, okay. So great, great, wonderful. So this is how it's going to be, uh, everyone. So you see here Caesarea, right? He's in Caesarea from Jerusalem. They took him to Caesarea. Uh, and here Paul boards a ship sent to Rome to appeal to Caesar that we are quite clear of. Okay, let me see. Ah, you can see it big now. Very good. So here he is boarding the ship. Now this is the journey. He'll go. Basically, there are lots of names. Okay, don't get confused by that. If you are the kind who cannot remember all the names, it's okay. That's why I'm just showing you uh, the picture first, and then I'll take you into the 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 uh, what really happened. So Paul boards the ship here, and then I told you with Julius. Okay, one of the centurions, and then he's moving. He's moving, Sidon, and then they try to change a ship here. So they go uh, up over Cyprus. They come here to this place. Over here, they're changing. Okay, the ship changed to a grain ship sailing to Italy. So, you know, it's like how we, we go. Uh, okay, if I have to go uh, somewhere, I go to Mumbai or I go to Chennai, I change my flight, and then from there, the, the route happens. So something like that, that is a, 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 a way and they are taking that route so over here they change the ship it moves this way but then uh you know it it moves towards um you know salmon salmon and lassia over here fair heavens here uh you know by now you will notice that the weather was changing okay the weather was changing and it was likely for a uh for the ship to get wrecked and paul already had an idea so he warns them the winds are changing and all that happens so paul warns them about the dangers of the voyage he tells them hey look if we continue and if we continue in in this uh, route you know the crete and all that then we are going to get into trouble but they actually don't listen to him they continue in that journey so now once they give into the journey the winds are not favorable okay so things become very very it becomes very troubled so now the wind is kind of you know carrying the ship and you see how it's not a is it's not a uh, like a uh, a straight line it's going here and there it's just to show that the ship is caught up in a storm for four days okay so it is tempest tossed and um, the hope to be saved is given up Okay, uh, but God gives a word to Paul when the ship is in this situation, and it's not just Paul. There are some two hundred odd people on that ship. But uh, initially, when Paul wants the people here, he tells them, "Look, if you go, it's dangerous. There's going to be loss of life as well as material things." Uh, but later on, you know, God gives him an encouragement and says, "Okay, you know, Paul, you have been praying, uh, and uh, uh, you know." Uh, that the uh, only the ship will be destroyed people will not be destroyed so that's what actually happens so let me make it uh, all right so then the journey happens like that it's not very smooth because of the tempest then they decide it's hard to control the ship uh, we need to bring it we need to go and stop somewhere okay so uh, they come to this island called as malta Okay, this is where the ship is actually stopped. So you will see that from here, right? Once uh, Paul tells them that the life is not going to be lost, the the uh, centurion, right? He listens. He listens, and the people on the ship also they they uh, try to heed his words. So they try to stop the ship. So there's a lot of the ship language. You know, they put the anchor and they do this and that and 
again if you're not the kind you don't understand everything about how to manage the ship it's okay so just understand that they tried to stop the ship uh, with minimum damage uh, but when they did that uh, it they tried to stop it but still they couldn't uh, bring it, bring you know the ship to halt in a gentle way so it goes and crashes right but before that also uh, they give permission for people to jump off the ship and uh, swim safely to the island so here the ship lost in the storm all aboard swim safely to the shore so they come to this place called malta and over here uh, there is a ministry that paul and uh, you know paul is engaged in so we will read about that uh, this would be in acts chapter 28 then after that he will go you see the route here syraku accuse regium and then he will go wait let me show you this okay yeah finally all the way come here meet some believers and all that fellow believers and courage en route you know paul always does that right so en route also there's some ministry going on finally come to rome so in rome you know he will share that um, this is the accusation against me uh, and uh, th that is why i just appeal to caesar i've come here uh, and then they kind of give him some time right uh, so he stays in a rented home and then he continues preaching about jesus to the uh, roman people now please note the book of romans was written much ahead he goes to rome only later even in his book uh, in his epistle he says that you know he says that okay i wish to come to you and also he's never really met them so finally he comes here and two years under house arrest <laughs> meaning he can't go wherever he likes he has to be within the home but even there he is able to do the ministry so i hope this has really helped all of you i just quickly show you the ha huh, so look at this picture right you look at the picture of uh, from the judean region caesarea this way is going all the way okay because of the storm it's not smooth but yeah they come and crash on malta otherwise they probably would not have crashed here they would have you know maybe the route would have been something like this i don't know and then come to italy come to rome which is the capital so that he can make his appeal and also you know this has the colored uh, regions for you so i'll quickly touch on things again here you see here uh, the judean region syria syrian antioch remember antioch then from here we know that he went to uh, his first missionary journey he went to macedonia right macedonia you see here so he wanted to enter asia uh, but then god didn't allow him at that time but later on ephesus he came and he ministered in ephesus so macedonia uh, macedonia achaia remember achaia where uh, you had the corinthian uh, church then athens right and then your another main church here is ephesus and you know how we read about those seven churches right seven churches uh, in the book of revelation look at that seven churches pergus pergamos pergamum thyatira sardis philadelphia laodicea smyrna ephesus so the seven churches over here this is what the apostle paul writes to they were actually churches in in those days so you know a, a very very beautiful picture here and of course today if you look at the map uh, uh, it is you may not have the same names right the names have changed uh in the modern map asia minor turkey you know those are the countries uh, that we're talking about uh, but you can compare it you can compare it with the uh the old map uh, such as what was um, written about by luke to today's map so you won't find these names you know galatia uh, pontus bithynia and all so you just have to maybe uh, superimpose these and understand these regions with today's names okay so this is little bit more just for your interest uh, regarding the final journey of paul and i really hope that was helpful okay so now it becomes easy for us to understand acts chapter 27 uh, in acts chapter 28 yeah so now don't get confused oh ma'am is saying so many names it's okay just relax if you can't understand so now we saw that um, uh, with julius 
Paul is sent, and then uh, in Acts chapter twenty-seven, the voyage or the ship journey is described. So they start sailing, um, and also the name of the ship is mentioned, uh, Adramitium. Uh, it was put to sea. And notice here, Luke says we put to sea. So that means Luke is also in the travel. Okay, Luke is also with Paul over here, uh, meaning to sail along the coasts of Asia. Then uh, Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, was with us, and uh, the next day we landed at Sidon. Okay, remember those places. So there is not just Paul, but you also have uh, other people with him. So Luke is there, uh, Aristarchus is there. Uh, they are all traveling. Okay, Aristarchus. Uh, I think I, I talked about him. Aristarchus and Secundus, right? And we said that Aristarchus is um, a Thessalon. He seems to be a rich and a, a prominent person from uh, Macedonia. And at the same time, Secundus was, you know, he was from a lower uh, strata of society. But you see what the gospel did. There were the the uh, you know rich people and the poor people all serving to. Together. Okay, and God gave favor to Paul. So we read here that Julius treated him kindly and gave him liberty, okay, to uh, uh, receive his friends and receive care from his friends. So now, when they were sailing, um, they sailed under the shelter of Cyprus. Remember, you saw that Cyprus, but because the winds were con. Uh, 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 sailed by the shelter of Cyprus because the winds, even there, the winds were not very um, uh, helpful or friendly. So, uh, you know, they when you travel a little closer to the land, there's more safety. So they went, you know, uh, closer to the land, mm, and then they uh, come to certain regions. Lycia, we saw that. So they come there and over there, they changed the ship. So they found an Alexandrian ship sailing to Italy. So basically, they have to get a ship that goes to Italy. So now they board that ship. Okay, when they started to sail slowly, many days, um, uh, they had difficulty. Why? Because the wind was not permitting them to proceed. So again, they kind of sailed a little differently. Went to Crete uh, of Salmon, and then uh, they came to a place called Fair Heavens near. Uh, Lesia. Okay, over here is where Paul wants them, and he advises them, and he says, uh, "You know, uh, we have spent a lot of time, uh, and sailing is dangerous. Okay, and uh, it seems like you know at that time people were also on a fast. All right, so he advises them, and he tells them, look, men, uh, I think." You know, this voyage will end with disaster and much loss. Not only of the cargo and ship cargo is like the things that they are carrying. Those days, through ship they would transport, right? All those precious things. Um, you had food items and different different things. So, all that is going to be destroyed. Ship would be destroyed, and also our lives. How did Paul know that? Prophetic. Right? The spirit of God would have told him, and also maybe you know Paul from his uh, past. He 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 is pretty well versed in so many things. He has traveled quite a bit, so he might have had an idea about you know the ship and uh, the way uh, this wind is going to affect the ship. So he gives them a warning, but you know the they don't listen. The centurion he goes ahead. You know, with with the way he wanted to uh, deal with things, and he does not uh, heed to the warning of Paul. Uh, they continued. Okay, they continued to go. Mm. Uh, yeah. So their their intention was, if we try to go now, maybe we can reach quickly. Okay, we can reach a safe zone quickly, uh, and uh, from there we'll see what to do. However, the whole wind happened, and we saw. Know the, this whole difficulty, the tempest, uh, and all, and it was called. You know, these days you have these cyclones. You no, know, they have a name. So even those days uh, on on the sea, uh, Euroclydon was the name of the tempestuous wind that arose. Okay, and it arose and it disturbed them on their way. 
uh so they did so many things on the ship trying to just you know uh make it little more secure but obviously you know uh, if you've seen certain movies on which the ship is in tempest you know they're doing their best to fix this fix that you know bring in some stability mm-hmm. uh, use some cables undergird the the ship so all that you would see and i remember i i, I gave you a link Uh, for this movie of uh, uh, acts of the apostles uh, it it is in accordance with the verses okay so it's it's not um, it's not outside of what is there in the book of acts so it will be good if you can watch it so then you you will have a better idea of how they try to protect themselves so they did all that they try to lighten um, uh, the ship okay uh, but they were still struggling on the ship but after a long time when uh, uh, you know mm, they had struggled and they were also scared that they are going to die at that point you know paul came back and he encouraged them and said that look uh, uh, an angel came and uh, like uh, i i have a message from god that uh, we yes there is going to be destruction of the ship but one thing i want to tell you you know god said that he has heard uh, my prayers and that the people on the ship you know will not die so do not be afraid okay uh so he kind of encourages the people so let me read it for you i'm trying to look at all the things quickly and tell you so a little bit of a um you know confusion here in the scriptures okay so he tells the people men uh, you should have listened to me and not have sailed this is verse 21 of uh, chapter 27 uh, so he says you should not have sailed from crete and incurred this disaster and loss and now i urge you to take heart for there will be no loss of life among you but only of the ship for there stood by me this night an angel of of god <laughs> to whom i belong and who my serve saying do not be afraid paul you must be brought before caesar and indeed god has granted you all those who sail with you so he encouraged them therefore take heart men for i believe god that it will be just as it was told me however we must run aground on a certain island so he gives them advice so now they listen to him okay uh, and uh, we are told that the 14th night had come uh, and then they kind of you know work on the ship and he tells them we need to go to an island so they do their part of setting the mm, uh, you know the anchor down and all of that uh, and he also remember i told you there was a fast people were on a fast so paul also encourages them and says okay we have been on a fast for a while mm, uh, let's go ahead and eat and and so people were encouraged uh, and at that time the uh, centurion was a little afraid because it was not just paul uh, a prisoner that that he had on board but there were other prisoners as well so if the ship is going to be wrecked okay and the ship is going to be destroyed um, uh, the prisoners will escape isn't it but still uh, so what what the uh, uh, in charges would generally do is they would kill the prisoners because if the prisoners escape then they are in trouble but still you know uh, this person had faith in paul and he had faith in the word that paul had spoken and he did not want to kill anyone because if he killed other prisoners they would also need to kill paul but he was kind towards paul and he just uh, uh, you know decided that he wouldn't do it and they gave permission for uh, people to swim to shore uh, with faith that okay they will not escape in any way okay so they gave permission for that and when they had kind of tried to secure the ship unfortunately yeah it slowed down but it went and crashed on this island and that island is called malta and i showed that to you okay so this island again uh, it seems like it was a little obscure it was not a, a well traveled place you know some places people go often so they know about it but this place was not well traveled at all so it was like a a bay with a beach mm, uh, and they you know through that they uh, went over here uh, and finally you know, they landed over here uh, all the prisoners and everyone uh, there were about 200 people 
you know in total who um, landed on this island called malta uh, and they were all safe now on the land okay so on this island of malta as soon as they came over there the people were hospitable you know they were quite kind there were these island people um and uh, they made a fire for uh, these people uh, you know the the ship folks so when they made a fire and uh, you know paul came and sat there apparently a wiper okay a wiper because of the heat you know they say that when there is heat uh, then uh, snakes come out so the wiper came out and it fastened itself on the hand of paul so the moment the islanders saw it you know sometimes uh, uh, people who don't know about god you know they may have their own concepts about god and uh, you know what god does so they thought that god is judging you know this man he must be some sinner maybe he is a murderer that uh, look at this you know how he tried to escape already when he was on the ship there was such a tempest you know, which would have killed him but he, this man has escaped even then you know uh, the way they looked at it is look at this god is not sparing his life destiny is not sparing his life the wiper uh, has fastened around his hand so if the islanders thought that then uh, it is likely that the uh, snake or the wiper that they are talking about it was a poisonous one isn't it because unless it was a poisonous one why would they think that paul is going to die it was definitely a poisonous one but you see that paul shook off the creature into the fire and he suffered no harm sometimes when these these uh, poisonous creatures they even touch us you know our body can have a reaction and who knows what kind of a reaction they have seen uh, people have because of this wiper but it was amazing that nothing happened to paul you know how um uh, we we read that isn't it in the in the gospels that even uh, deadly snakes jesus said that you are going to overcome those snakes but of course it was not a literal thing it was more of we will overcome satan uh, but in this case you notice that uh, the snake did not affect paul in any way or the venom or the poison of the snake did not affect paul in any way so how do we understand this you know when we are serving god <coughs> there are miracles of protection that happen so every time do you think we can go catch a snake put it on us poisonous snake and expect nothing to happen no i don't think it will work because we are trying to test god you know when we do foolish things like that uh, however when we are caught in a situation in this case paul was caught in a situation he didn't know what else to do he was there and the snake came but god protected him he shook the snake off into the fire then when the people saw this um you know they they changed their mind and they thought he was a god you know how even earlier we have seen this in lystra when they healed a, a, a lame man paul and barnabas the they were called as god and that time paul and barnabas they told the locals they said hey come on don't call us god we are not god we are just serving okay uh, we are we are ministers we are servants of god so here again on the island uh, paul is thought of as god uh, but we know that that was obviously it's not mentioned that he he discouraged them but he would have because that is the common pattern we see the early church anyone who praises and puts a, a, a preacher or a minister on a pedestal they always say no please give god the glory we are also human beings just like you so that's what paul would have done one more incident of ministry here is there is uh, the you know a leading citizen of the island meaning must be somebody who is popular or somebody who is a leader or elder in that place um his father okay uh, was sick so his name is publius his father lay sick with fever and dysentery and we are told that paul went there and prayed and healed him laid hands on him and healed him so uh, this amazing miracle also took place in this island of malta and when it happened you know many of many people with diseases were brought and they were healed another thing for us to note here is who is writing this book or who is writing this letter uh, 
it also could be a defense letter remember we said that maybe luke was writing all this so that in rome when paul goes to meet caesar he can give this to to the authorities and say this these are the details okay let him go free so it could be a legal account as well so some this is luke and he's also a doctor and for a doctor to say that paul prayed laid hands and the fever was healed is a big thing because you know doctors very logical uh, unless they see it they confirm it they would never write about it so luke wrote about it and he also says here that the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed so we can consider the report of a doctor here about healing so finally you know after all this happens we saw how uh, once again they got another they uh, got on to a ship and then they moved towards rome uh, and he finally comes to rome okay and there uh, en route he meets other believers he interacts with them stays with them and uh, uh, you know they are also very pleased with paul when uh, so it it's like this mutual friendship and mutual encouragement that they have for one another uh, and paul was very happy so we see here verse 15 that he thanked god and he took courage when he saw these other believers finally they come to rome the centurion uh, gives over paul to the captain of the guard and uh, paul is permitted to dwell on his own with the soldier who guarded him so you know uh, the way paul lived there is also if you've seen pictures uh, you would see that you know there was a um, uh, like a chain tied to paul and the chain would be tied to a prisoner so uh, sorry a soldier so paul can't escape wherever he goes he has to go with the with the um, uh soldier okay or or the um uh, who is this guard he has to go with the guard so that is the way in which he was allowed to live freely but under house arrest and he was with a guard all the time now paul goes and he shares to uh, the authorities and same thing he uh, tells them look i have been accused of these 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 things so which is why i made um an appeal to come and meet caesar for this reason therefore i have called for you to see you and speak with you uh because for the hope of israel i am bound with this chain so he uh, reveals that these are the things that happened but i have come here mm. then they said to him we neither received letters from judea concerning you nor have any of the brethren who came reported or spoken any evil of you but we desire to hear from you what you think for concerning this sect we know that it is spoken against everywhere so the jews there they were interested to find out more about what is this way who is this jesus who is this paul what is all this noise about so they say okay hold on you know we will hear you so he was put under house arrest and you know it's very beautiful when you read how he was there in house arrest he had some freedom people could come people could listen to him so we are told that uh, you know um many came to him at his lodging to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of god persuading them concerning jesus from both the law of moses and the prophets from morning till evening you imagine how much revelation one should have to share god's word from morning till evening and first of all he is a prisoner okay and we saw he was there for a couple of years so many people heard the gospel many responded many jews believed and also there were jews who disbelieved right they heard and they said what is this we don't want to believe in this uh, jesus or this paul okay uh, so in this way you know god ministered through paul and the gospel went out to the jews it went out to the gentiles mm. uh and also you know because of the way paul was ministering there was also a dispute uh among the jews okay that's what we read here so he dwelt he lived here two whole years in his own rented house and all who came to him you know they um, he allowed people to come to him he was preaching about the kingdom of god teaching uh, regarding the uh, things which concerned him uh, and um, 
with all confidence and nobody was actually stopping him so that's the end of acts chapter 29 but again you know it's quite sudden you're like okay what happened then he was in rome uh he was preaching day and night mm, what next so it ends abruptly now again why it ended abruptly that's another question right that we have but we know that the work that god started by the holy spirit never really ended and that is why sometimes you have uh, people use the term acts 29 there's no 29 chapter in the book of acts but that acts 29 is god continuing his work today through you and me yes paul did his work and we know you know later on after this the final years uh, of of paul's life and you know the end when he wrote second timothy and then he was uh, killed right so that was the end of paul's life uh, but god's work continues through each one of us it will continue through anyone and everyone who believes uh, and that is that is what uh, this entire book of acts is all about with that we come to a close of the book of acts and uh, i i'm you know blessed to uh, be able to uh, share about the book of acts and i encourage you you know you can go read it in different versions read it with the maps read it with the um, you know the current uh, map uh, you could also uh, watch the movie right the the link that i shared with you uh, and you know every time different incidents just minister to our hearts and the depth of what god did uh, in and through the book of acts really strengthens us okay so let's end with a word of prayer i would just like to request one of us to please go ahead and pray please and with that we close this course on acts okay pastor yeah let me pray thank you lord for um being with us throughout this semester and lord thank you for letting us dive in in the book of um ex and letting us study about the great seven of yours lord father who sh- shakes the world upside down lord Lord Father, we believe that Lord Father, if you have used them, Lord Father, we believe and know that Lord Father, you are going to use us too, Lord Father. Like uh, in your word says, Lord Father, many are called but few are chosen. Lord Father, we want to be the few who will go out to be a voice to the world, right to the kingdom uh, for your kingdom, Lord. So, Father, uh, whatever we have learned from day one, Lord Father, let us all apply this in our daily walk with you. And Lord Father, we just want to say thank you. Uh, that love father for blessing pastor Nancy love father might be for your uh, to be your voice love father to us love father lord we pray that love father you will use her mightly for your kingdom and let your face shine upon her and be gracious to her throughout your and throughout her life love father so lord bless everyone and love father keep us clear conscious love father towards you love father throughout our life in Jesus name i pray amen 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 yeah thank you everyone god bless you thank you for joining along i hope you were blessed thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. bye bye god bless